your views. You can SMS at any time during the show. Type Spectrum, leave a space, type in your contribution and name, then send it to 7197. Your views, our interviews on Spectrum, Radio 1 FM 90. Hello, a very warm welcome. This is Spectrum on Radio 1. I'm your host, Edmond. This is the Good evening. On <coughs> Spectrum tonight. Why the latest standoff between the executive and parliament over the pending oil deal? The parliament and the executive have locked horns yet again, this time over the proposed oil and gas bill. While the legislature says past license operators in the industry should be vested in the proposed Uganda Oil Authority while sections of the legislature, President Joel Museveni says his minister should be allowed exclusive powers to do so. Opposers say this leaves a large lacuna for corruption. On Wednesday, legislators almost came to blows in a fully packed plenary. But Speaker Rebecca Kajaga walked out and has promised to investigate and possibly punish lawmakers who led in the fracas. The question remains though, why would government want powers to license operators for such an important resource vested in an individual? Would that not lead to possible abuse? Civil society have said they will lead this debate from outside of parliament. Over the weekend, they announced a plan to team up with legislators to strongly oppose the idea of the powers being given to the minister alone. Tonight on Spectrum, we examine the root of this conflict and ask why the executive insists on granting such powers to one individual, a possible opening for abuse, and not a commission or authority, as is the case with the banking, the broadcast, insurance, as well as a host of other sectors. Our guests tonight. Dr. Zach Niringye, retired Anglican Bishop of Kampala, now a member of the Civil Society Coalition on Oil and Gas. You're most welcome, Dr. Zach. Thank you, and uh, good evening to all those who are listening to us. We also are joined by Mr. Paul Bukenya, Head of the Communications Department of the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development. You're most welcome, Mr. Bukenya. Thank you, Edmund. I'm not Paul Bukenya, but Bukenya <laughs> um, Yeah. Good evening to listeners, and I I would I should know. About I look forward to having a, a very good uh, discussion this evening. Mr. Bukenya, why do you want to give the Minister of Energy such enormous powers to license? Oh, I, th I believe that's your statement. Um, uh, we, th there's nowhere where it says that the minister shall have exclusive powers to, in, in licensing. Uh, what I know is that uh, if you read uh, Article 9, which is the bone of contention between government and parliament, uh, and then uh, read the subsequent ones, uh, especially 58 and 59, and then the, 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 the relevant sections of the law that delineates powers and allotted to the authority and to the minister, you clearly see that there is no exclusivity that is given to the minister to, in granting of the licensing. And uh, let me say that uh, Parliament is not locked with government, I mean, it's, locking, it's not locking horns with government over the law, but some sections of the law, because you realize that there are about 180 clauses, but uh, which uh, members have discussed and agreed upon. But this area of Article uh, 9 is the one that is pro producing this uh, hullabaloo about the entire law. But uh, my feeling in this uh, area is that uh, possibly I would take it that it's uh, a matter of the, uh, drafting semantics where you have shall and then may and those two words where wherever they exist you know um, are looked at differently by the uh, members of parliament and this is the bone of contention. Doctor, explain your side for us. I, I, I really don't want to have a feeling that that we are on two opposite sides. So let's begin there, because I would hope that we should not be, because this is about Uganda. Yes. This is about a resource for all of Uganda. Hmm. So at the very least, I think we must attempt. We must work at consensus. Right. So I don't want to be on the opposite side of my friend. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, so, um, but it's, it's, it seems to be very clear. If you read, if you read the clause, the relevant clause, and, and I, I actually don't know. You use the word semantics. You use the word uh, drafting. I, I, I don't think so because if you read 
Clause 9 provides for the functions of the minister to include granting and revoking licenses, yes. initiating, developing, and implementing oil and gas policy, right. submitting draft legislation to Parliament for issuing petroleum regula reg uh, regulations, yes. five, negotiating and endorsing petroleum agreements, right. six, approving field development plans, yes. seven, promoting and sustaining transparency in the petroleum sector, uh, eight, approving data management systems, right. and then nine, any other function incidental or consequential to his or her functions. Very, very clearly, these are very, very sweeping powers. There is no doubt about it that ultimately, uh, the granting and revoking of licenses, that's, that's complete. I mean, that is not to say that um, he actually has any recourse to any, he grants, he revokes uh, when it says approving field development plans. So I think there is no doubt, and I think what I, what I think you've said, which is very true, that this is one clause of over 180 right. plus. Yeah. But what I think the members of parliament argued very well is that if, and through the negotiating process, mm -hmm. you will recall that the negotiation of that process did include the recognition that actually if you left clause 9 as is, it affects other clauses. So this is, uh, this is a clause on which many other clauses depend. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially in respect to the functions of the authority, uh, the functions of uh, 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 parliament, uh, uh, it's a very long, it's, it's huge, and it's not really in my uh, particular. I think for us in civil society, it's to say that we have a history the history of the management, even in the very short period, the very short period, uh, we know that there have been problems. We know that there have been, uh, uh, government hasn't always got, Uganda hasn't got what it ought to have got thus far. So, secondly, this is over a backdrop in which very evidently abuses in public office are simply now beyond description. You have abuses of uh, unimaginable proportions in, in the Prime Minister's office. If that can happen in the Prime Minister's office, uh, we have abuse of unimaginable proportions in the public service. And, and I could go on. This is after Ministry of Education, uh, ghost teachers, ghost pupils, ghost schools, uh, Ministry of Health, and we could go on. So I, yes, absolutely. And I think for Parliament to say, wait a moment, we need to be more careful that enough checks and balances are provided for, and that institutions are really strengthened to be able to provide centers of governance. Uh, so this, I think, is what it's about. And for me, I think we, in, in, in reflecting on the impasse, by the way, it's important to recognize the chronology of events, that actually Parliament had negotiated very well. Well, and, and civil society had been engaged in this process up to last week. But something happened on Thursday. That is when, happened? what happened on Thursday was when government introduced this uh, 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 motion for a committal of Clause 9, mm -hmm. which had been negotiated and had agreed, and provisions had been made for minister to approve the granting and revoking of licenses, <laughs> approved. All this had been provided for. And then suddenly, this uh, motion to for a committal came really surprised. And remember the circumstances, it's very evident. The entire house could not be there. There is no doubt that uh, FDC was conducting its elections. So there is no doubt that on Thursday, and we also are aware that still on Thursday, indeed it was mentioned that there were members of the house who could not possibly be there. Uh, there was clear evidence that there was an attempt to still the rush through this the voting on clause nine and i think that is what is really most disconcerting so what happened on wednesday must be understood in the light of what happened on thursday the real
reason why you had the tension on sorry on on Tuesday the reason you had the tension on Tuesday was because of the action that had been taken on Thursday that's the point yeah but uh, Bishop uh, I mean you mentioned uh, you read through the can, can you say that, that uh, Bishop, uh, some of the functions of the minister says that they part the conditions close my functions of the minister the minister shall be responsible for granting and revoking of license uh, that, that, that's where I was coming into uh, Edmund to uh, advise that uh, if you read these uh, um, responsibilities in isolation you are bound to make mistakes by uh, not accepting or not uh, looking at the fact that the minister has uh, her powers, you know, granted, yes, but in consultation with an authority. Uh, my dear let's friend, uh, no, no, wait a moment. Uh, uh, let's go back to your, your point of semantics. Uh, just this, this clause says, shall. You know that. Not me. Right. Not may, not it is shall. And when you use shall in this law, this is, um, law is not my thing, but the last time I checked with these lawyers, yes. the shall means that's it. Yeah, I mean it's mandatory right. when it's, it's, ma it's, ma it's mandatory. Yes. But is there anywhere in the law where the minister is permitted or where the authority is permitted to work with the minister in the processing and granting of these licenses? As, well, as, as far as uh, the, uh, the, 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 the the functions of the authority uh, is concerned, I'm looking at the, the authority. Yes. We talked about the minister, yes. the minister and the establishment of authorities. Right. There, is a, there is established the Petroleum Authority of Uganda. Yeah. It shall be acquired a cooperative perpetual succession and an official seal, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. It will acquire, hold, and dispose of move and move of the usual yeah. yeah. Functions of the authority. The function of the authority is to monitor and regulate exploration, development, and production. Mm -hmm. So they monitor the, the minister approves, mm -hmm. gives licenses, mm -hmm. and the authority approve, uh, uh, mon monitors. Do they have only one function? Well, they have several. Monitor and review, review and approve uh, exploration areas, review and approve budgets submitted mm -hmm. by licenses, mm -hmm. assess mm -hmm. field development plans and make recommendations. Mm -hmm. But let's try to do some parallels. Yeah. And assess sale and production and cessation of production. The details, the technical side of it. But let's try mm -hmm. to look at some parallels. The yeah. of Uganda regulates the banking industry and it licenses them. Uganda Communications Commission regulates the broadcast industry and it licenses them. Yes. Why is this one different? Why should we have this one separate? Why can't we have the authority uh, licensing and regulating? Uh, we have parallels already. In other well, you, you notice that this is uh, a resource that uh, Bishop uh, recognizes is uh, of paramount interest to all Ugandans, much like the other business is. But this is a new area. It's a new area where government cannot leave it entirely to uh, bodies and authorities under it. It has to have an involvement in what goes on in this area. And government, of and course, acts in, 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 in public interest. Well, maybe in future it will. It will be qualified, but as, at, at the starting point, you and me can guess. I mean, we are all... I, actually, to be honest with you, yeah. I personally didn't think this was an area of debate. First of all, let's, let's acknowledge this. I think government, you have to find a way, and by government we are talking about the minister, the mm. cabinet, the president. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what the government means. Yes. Okay. In including yourself. No, 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 no. When you talk about government, because if you see, if you speak about the arms of, of the of government. Yes. So let's let's be very clear that mm. in this instance, uh, it's the ministry, it's the minister, yeah. it's the cabinet, yeah. it's the president, yeah. it's the president, it's the minister, it's the cabinet. It's it's the minister insisting on these powers. Mm -hmm. There is no doubt that Parliament had negotiated and had actually come to agreement. What was the was nine? What was the agreement? The agreement was very clear. I had there actually was agreement. an agreement. Please do your homework. Of course, this is what you ought to have done. Please, you, you can't plead ignorance. Well, you come well, 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 from the Ministry of Energy. Well, well, but the well, agreement well, was. Well, I must tell you that I must have that agreement in place in order for me to believe that there was such an agreement. Oh, Otherwise, okay. if you okay. let me check, 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 let me
are sharing this res re these responsibilities where the minister was to approve the spe specific issue and of course uh, I, I really kind of wish there was a member of parliament who was right there to yeah, be able yeah, to say based that. on what uh, on, on what recommendation on the minister's own recommendation no 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 this you, you know when this bill of, yeah. this bill has gone through processes I know I'm quite aware absolutely you, so you don't have to so why are you asking me what you're quite aware of yeah but 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 what we are saying is even if the minister was to approve bishop I mean it so, will be based on yes of course based on what the authority has done correct precisely okay. that's what had been you see that's what had been the consensus arrived at mm -hmm. and that's why I'm saying mm -hmm. uh, and Edmund this is very important yes bishop. actually people will not appreciate what happened on Tuesday if you don't actually discuss what happened on Thursday last week that's the key Let's get the what happened on Thursday last week is the minister came and there was a real a U-turn on a process that Parliament had thus far by consensus arrived at which was that again the details of which is not really I'm not privy to well, but definitely may be. there was, there was uh, and my colleagues in the uh, civil society coalition who had been working on this in a more detailed fashion yes minister to approve the uh, authority was to grant those licenses but on approval minister all right mm -hmm. revoke on approval of the minister mm -hmm. uh, the approving of field uh, development plan mm. that was something to be assessed done by the authority and mm. so on and so forth yeah, yeah. so this had been negotiated but on Thursday the minister uh, put a motion for the committee to say we want clause 9 in its original version mm -hmm. and that's what created the problem Mm -hmm. Because suddenly the people had been engaged in the process of this building of consensus. Certainly, not all of them were on, you know, in Parliament. Yes. All right. Uh, immediately, there was a clear indication that on Thursday last week, uh, the, the cabinet was there. What was supposed the to be? Focus was there. Yeah. Actually, yes, motion, uh -huh. recommito, mm -hmm. debate, mm -hmm. and then vote. The only reason mm -hmm. the vote didn't happen is because there was no quorum. That's all. At what point did the fracas begin in Parliament? The fracas came, this, but Mr. The fracas came mm -hmm. on Tuesday when the speaker, as soon as this item call came on uh, on the order paper, yes. was asked for division lobby, which means it's now time to actually begin the process of counting the heads. Mm -hmm. And the point was, how did this happen? There is a reversal in of an original position in a sitting on Thursday mm -hmm. in which clearly there is not a quorum right mm -hmm. now when <laughs> the house is 90 percent plus now it's time to vote clear and the name i was sitting in parliament i i was in the public gallery and clearly the point was these people had come to vote so clearly the government of course had mobilized yeah everybody had mobilized yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, very clearly, no, 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 for me, we have to discuss what, can he explain to me uh, why the recommito? Uh, explain uh, 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 Bishop, I, I, I am not a, a politician and I'm not a, a parliamentarian. I don't think I am uh, in that uh, uh, I'm competent to explain to you what happens in parliament. Let's talk about issues uh, regarding I would the, imagine. the role of the ministry. I know, of but I would imagine that by the time the minister came to parliament, yeah. you, the technocrats, would have advised him go and ask for a recommitter of this of this clause. Yeah, but suppose you advise that uh, like that. So you, can uh, you please explain to the minister explain uh, uh, to and changes that position. No, explain to this country would you what be, advice would you, you gave to the minister would you that be, created the basis for the recommitter. Would you be able this was uh, a business uh, transacted in the parliament. If it was business transacted in the ministry, yes, maybe you would slip a, a piece of paper and advise the minister. But if we advise the minister and on reaching there, supposedly she changed that advice and acted, uh, you know, contrary to.
to what we had advised. I mean, let's look at the. Not be responsible. Can you try to explain to us whether you don't why, why the rational having power centralized in the minister rather than the authority? For me, I don't believe that that uh, is the situation because the reason why this law is in Parliament is to accommodate everybody's uh, contribution into this law, and for us, we still wait. And, I mean, I may stand on the side and say, look, I'm a public servant. My job was to draft the law and put it to Parliament for them to discuss and give us a good law. So it remains their business to uh, discuss, you know, and reach a consensus. But sure, you can still explain this. to us. Yes. You can still explain to this no, country no, no. Bishop, why Bishop, yes. uh, you have not explained why yes. you tend to uh, sympathize with the opposition. I can tell you why. I can tell you No, tell you. no you haven't. No, no, so let me give it to you. Let so me give it to you. Let me repeat. No, 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 no. Bishop, don't, no, no, ask no, me. don't ask me. No, I'm not going to ask you now. I can repeat why. What I'm, I'm not uh, competent. I'm not going to ask you now. To, to, I'm not going to ask you. To. But I'm what I'm saying yes, is that that is not to say that the minister is being given a lot of powers. Because the reason why this was included was for mem to enable members discuss and agree whether that should be the case or not. Now, if they haven't yet agreed and it has caused commotion in Parliament, I, I believe when they return, they are going to put uh, their house in order. Yes. Well, some people think, they, let's look at the zero draft from the minister, and we're taking it straight back to the ministry, the entire ministry, including yourself. Mm -hmm. Some people think it will open this up for corruption. It's easier to corrupt an individual than to corrupt for one individual make a mistake. You think an authority cannot be corrupted? Well, some people think it's easier to corrupt one person of one person make a mistake. Haven't we had, haven't we had Edmund corruption in uh, those entities? Does it really, I mean, uh, encapsulate an authority from corruption? Well, it doesn't. Well, the common sense would say if any had a large number of people. I, I mean, had how? All these are, you know, human beings, and everybody is looking for money for an extra buck. Uh, how do you guarantee that an authority cannot be uh, uh, compromised? I mean, didn't you have a case with NSSF before the board uh, at, uh, in the Temangalo transaction? What happened? Wasn't a board in place? Wasn't it an authority? No, what I'm trying to give you is the fact that you can't really uh, um, say that powers being given to uh, an authority cannot be compromised. I, I don't know how you'd well, put... But the point uh, here is that you have a, a, a board for the authority of yes. nine people, but you have an entire secretary, you have technical people, yes. experts parallel in people, for instance, that oh. would advise this board, yeah. the management that do the day that does the day. Yeah, yeah, but my contention, my contention here that is that can't them. all these people be compromised? This is each such a each one of them in their own way? We're going for a break. We'll be back. We'll discuss that point and different others related to this matter to stage. Discover the new invigorating taste of Red Vodka Lemon. Red Vodka Lemon. Reinvent the night. Not for sale to persons under 18. Uh, excuse me, guys. Let me through, please. Yes. Chick, chick, this guy. Goodness, dude, what are you doing? Get real. Just, just move. Just what? A little to beat. Man, what? What are you doing bringing a cow into the sitting room? It's just for when I want milk. Just what? Just please move. Just let it come and sit here. Show me this guy. You cannot keep a cow in your home, but you can get the freshness of its milk straight from the farm into your home. Get fresh diary milk for freshness straight from the farm every day. Fresh diary. So fresh. Chokawanange, wow. This is a really nice place. So is there something you wanted to tell me, honey? <laughs> Sweetie? Uh-huh. We've been together for a long time, and... Uh, and? I, I want to take this to the next level. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to start by dialing 135 star, one hash. Huh? <laughs> MTN Zone allows you to save more for the things you love. To activate, dial star 135 star, one hash to enjoy up to 99% discount on all your calls. Honey, is that all? Mm. Uh, no, honey. We should have voted for more soup, huh? Wait up. MTN. Everywhere you go. 
Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. Welcome back to Spectrum. I'm very happy. Light on Spectrum. Why the latest stand of between the executive and parliamental pending royal field? Our guests tonight, Dr. Bishop Zak Miringi, retired Anglican Bishop of Kampala, now a member of the Civil Society Coalition of Life, Violent Girls, uh, Mr. Bukanyamato, head of the Communications Department of the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development. You will be able to call it in a short while and contribute to this discussion. Dr. Miringi, the ministry says even a board can be compromised. Why do you trust the board so much? No, no, let's, let's be very, very clear that the reason why you, every time you examine a law, the, the merits of that law must be examined on the basis to which it provides enough checks and balances. Checks and balances. It's to say that it gives authority, but that authority itself must be checked. Yes. Right? Yes. So it gives authority. It should not cripple those who must get on with the business. But there must be checks to say, okay, once that authority is exercised, there must be a way in which it's checked. It's, uh, you know, through processes. Processes, systems, are institutional. Processes, systems are institutional. So, the reason why the P Petroleum Authority uh, is institutional framework, which must also provide for the technical, the due diligence that is technical, technically competent. Yeah. Now, there is in the law, it provides for how that board is appointed, all right? And even in the very appointment of that board, there is a check, all right? All right? Approval. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. This is, this is why all this happens. Yeah. It's an approval process. Yeah. You know, so there is no appointment, there must be an approval process. Yeah. All of this is to do with checks and balances. So, therefore, you, in, in examining the merits of this law, the weakness with this clause is, is first of all, twofold. There is not in this clause, the minister shall grant revoke licenses. The minister shall. It, it does not provide for the necessary processes, institutional processes to provide those checks. Therefore, but this is weak. The other sections of yes, and the point that is being made, once you pass these, the others are redundant because you've already said shall. So, and the second thing, let's not miss this. Mm -hmm. This is over a backdrop. Let's be honest. Yes. We have a situation in which, frankly, and very sadly, I say this with sadness, that the abuse, the abuse of public office in this country is frightening. We cannot trust, sadly, we cannot trust, sadly, our ministers. In fact, right now, the, wait a moment. I will our our bishops as well. I thank you very much. I agree. I totally agree. So we must check. I am the first to say, check the excesses of the uh, abuse of power by any bishop. So we are not discussing bishops right now. We are discussing government. When the time comes to discuss bishops, no, no. When it comes to discuss bishops, let's discuss them. And I will not. They are not here to. Defend they, they are part and parcel of the governance you know, environment. You know? Yes, yeah. but I'm not here to defend bishops. Okay. And I'm not here to defend the church. Right. I'm simply saying we have a situation in which we the trust for public officials in this country is at its lowest. The evidence mm. is overwhelming. Yes. So what should so we that's do? That's number one. Yes. So what we have to do mm -hmm. is work harder at processes, institutional processes. Our institutions are weak. Our institutions need to be strengthened. Mm -hmm. Due processes, due processes. Those due processes are institutional. So, frankly, we now have to look at every law and check that these, our dear public officials, our brothers and sisters, our uncles, our relatives, do not continue to steal public resources. And already, already, my dear friend, do, do they steal because the, the, the there are no laws and processes that are through they the still act? They steal because because they are greedy. Yeah. Still, because they are greedy. Exactly. Right? So, but we must make it harder as a result of the weakness of no, in the, uh, no, we must make it harder for them right. to steal. Okay, go ahead. We must make it harder for them to steal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Suppose in this clause pass, if the minister has the pass to grant a revoke license, what could happen? Oh my goodness. What you can't ask. Look, if uh, the minister has a conversation with some farm, some external farm, mm -hmm. in some cubicle, Wherever it is, yes. uh, they have they strike an agreement. All the minister does is directs the officers, and I listen to this friend of mine the way he's arguing, directs the officers 
they do the bidding, the minister just approves his uh, Are you trying to say, Bishop, that so, there is no process of negotiating with this entity that uh, excuse me. is looking for? Uh, I with you, but you know, I can't check the nature of that negotiation. This clause says, shall grant revoke licenses. Because uh, haven't, you see, haven't you said it just a little while ago? Yes. That the minister should you yes. know, do whatever he or she is doing based on the recommendations of the technical people involved? That is if it is required. There is no requirement for that here. And that's my point. There is no requirement. Please look at it. I, I, Convince I, I, me that there is a requirement. I, I, I don't believe you because you seem to presuppose that a minister works alone in a ministry. I'll give us a scenario. The, 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 there are no structures of, uh, of government or ministry that advise the minister. Is that what you say? Give us, give us the scenario, Mr. Mark. I am not discussing. What? I am discussing this particular what's clause. The yeah. What's the scenario like? You know, uh, I mean, my, my understanding you know, and uh, knowledge is that a minister does not act by himself or herself seated in a cubicle, as the bishop says. The minister But acts. he can. And it happens. No, 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 don't say I he can. can. You, why, he can. Why, why can't he you can. say he cannot? Let me tell you, you, he can and he no, cannot. But that is, let me be clear. Let that me, is be clear your suspicion. Let that me remind you. It's not suspicion. Yeah, I mean, you if know, you, if I'm telling you, you say he can, evidence you are suspecting. The evidence that today, and that suspicion is based on, on the evidence today. Do you want me to... What is the evidence the in law? law? Hmm? Yeah, I mean... The I'm not discussing the law. The law. The, the, listen, the, the, the scam in the office of the Prime Minister... Is it, a, a, and was it based on uh, failures of the law? Wait a moment, I'm just talking to you about it? trust. Yeah. I'm just talking to you about trust. And why we must legislate, uh, we must make it harder for public officials to steal public resources. Who makes it harder? We must make sure that the law makes it harder. Who is going to manage the law? Institutions. Who is going to manage the law? Hmm. Are they the same Ugandan, you know, uh, people? I mean, public servants and other people. So when you are going to import new, a new crop of what people from elsewhere. Friend, that we should give up looking, scrutinizing the law so that it makes it harder for people to steal. You see, is that what you're suggesting? No, what I'm trying so to should just give what up. I'm trying to convey to you is the fact that I, I alluded to earlier on that I think faith lies at the bottom of everything. Because even if you consecrated the bishop so clean, but you, you may never know what lies under the, the yeah, castle. No, 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 no. I don't accept. No, I don't accept. And, and, and I do not accept well, it's, it's, these generalizations. When? My dear you, Edmund, you may we are discussing you may not, Clause 9. We are discussing Clause 9. We are discussing the merits of this clause, of this law, to provide for transparency and accountability. We are discussing the extent to which it ensures protecting public resources from uh, the I think uh, Bishop is the what I have to say Edmund Don't, is the fact that we have agreed that the reason why we subjected these laws to scrutiny in parliament was for us to come up with a good law yes. if they have not agreed yesterday the hope is that tomorrow they will agree yes okay. So there is a discussion still going on. But let's yeah. look at the merits. What could happen? Let's look at this scenario. Well, actually, I was in Parliament. Do you I think can the board cannot be compromised? I mean, oil is a big industry. A boy by oil cash. You know, no, in terms of, terms of being compromised. Of no, money, absolutely. Be compromised. Parliament has been compromised before. So, absolutely. Parliament has been compromised. Can't, can't an authority be compromised? Absolutely. An Let me tell you. The, the, the authority has been, authorities have been compromised before. <laughs> this is an amazing country. You are most in which, uh, no, no, I agree. Totally yeah. agree. Yeah. But you see that uh, what is easier, if you give these powers to a minister, to one individual, it is simply to say it will be much harder when you have a group. You know, we now the uh, what's the Inspector General of Pol the Inspector General of Government talks mm. about these days mm. what is called syndicate corruption. Yes, syndicated corruption. Yeah, syndicated corruption. Yeah. In which now he says to us, it's very difficult to tell, in, even in a district council, now even possibly in an entire institution. Because
because the chairman uh, is compromised, the cow is compromised, yes. everybody is bought. Yes. But actually, it's more expensive now to buy the entire group, do you understand my point, yes. than to buy the individual. That's the point. Yeah, but so the, the point I was making, you, you, really know? Making, uh -uh, you don't rule it out. No, I agree with you. Oh. You don't rule it out. But you make it harder, that's all. And that's what I was saying. My we must make it harder. My contention here, mm. Bishop, mm. is that, yes, I agreed, you can prescribe, you know, harsh laws to ensure that no corruption takes place. But if corruption is to take place, it will take place because it's the a, it, is, now. it will be the same human beings, yes. you know, managing the process. Can I get an update on our leaders from Mr. Okay, how far are we going to develop in this yeah, we have moved. Uh, well, exploration work, as you know, uh, has, is going on and uh, findings have been made. We have since moved from the 60 so also uh, oil wells. We are now into 77. And uh, the volumes uh, in place have uh, moved from 2.5 million uh, barrels, which were million barrels which we were talking about previously. Now we are into 3.5. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the efforts to uh, set up to put in place the requisite infrastructure uh, ongoing you know uh, we are now um, into uh, uh, acquisition of a refinery you know site uh, for which a resettlement action plan is underway and <coughs> companies are gearing themselves to pro uh, you know proposing to government their field development plans upon which uh, the contentious issuance of licenses will <laughs> will be you know handled Okay. Yeah, I mean they have to. Yeah, they, they have to, uh, to to submit to government uh, development plans. You know, product. If you want production plans, how they intend to produce uh, the stuff yeah, from yeah. underground, and these are all in place and they are being reviewed by government. Yeah, that's where we are. And of course, we are waiting for this new law. So you see, as soon as it gets, it will open, and then the government will, will shall we have another round of licensing after the law? Yes, yes, we shall have another li uh, uh, round of licensing. Yeah, I, I have to inform you that uh, um, licensing has been put at a stop because for, that was not enabling. Yes, for so many uh, years, and now that we have, uh, an, we anticipate a new law. That the new law will give us the processes of licensing. Where has it taken our industry such a long time? To develop. Ghana developed its own in three and a half years. We are six years there. We haven't even seen the first drop of oil. Ghana is working offshore, and offshore is much easier to handle than onshore. Well, and and half, yes. The, oh yes, but you see what what Ghana did was, for example, to import a platform from somewhere in the Middle East and put it in this out in the seas and begin production. Here, you have to develop infrastructure, which is land-based. Roads, uh, pipe network, plus the the outfit itself, a refinery, and the other uh, uh, associated, you know, infrastructure yeah. in terms of uh, cleaning facilities for the oil. Yeah. So this does not happen in one day. It cannot happen in three months or even a year. It takes quite a bit of time. So what do we expect the first oil to be sold? Uh, we haven't yet drawn up, you know, fixed time frames because. Uh, of the absence of the law, certainly. But after the law is in place, that's when it will become clear. Well, let's look at, let's imagine the law yeah. passed between now and February. Yeah, we should look to a period of, we are now talking about periods, not specific uh, yes. uh, uh, time segments, yes. of three to five years. Three to five years. Yeah. Before we get the oil. Yeah, because, well, the pipeline, I mean, because you know that this a refinery, all this uh, production infrastructure is not bought off shelf. You brought, it, yeah, you have to order for it. it yes, it has to be they designed. Have to it, they have to assemble it. They have to transport it. They have to carry out all the necessary checks, you know, and runs before. How long will it take to be three years? So yeah, about two to three years. Yeah, about. From the time you order it for it to start. Yeah. <coughs> so how far have you gone with that I have told you that we have uh, acquired land. Yeah. It has been surveyed. Quite yes. In Hoima. In Hoima, in Kavale, a place called Kavale, in Hoima district. And it's uh, 29 square kilometers and um, surveys has, have been done. And now we are looking at the, we are handling now the settlement action uh, plan. And what does that entail? It entails, you know, registration of people who are in that area, looking at their assets, what assets they have, and drawing plans how they shall move.
move from that area into new areas right. and the mechanism of movement because as you know when it comes to compensating people who are moving they have a choice some of them may want hard cash others may say no instead of okay. hard cash give me a plot of land and build me a house all that has to be uh, determined let's hear from the listeners this is Patrick. <coughs> you can call it now our number is 0414 
one hand it's true that we are in a we are in a tough place as a country there is no doubt that the um, the ways in which public officials particularly uh, uh, political leadership in the country uh, thus far somebody says we've given them the responsibility why can't we trust them the, the real sad thing is that we are in a place where as a country our leadership is failing us because on counts where we really ought to trust our leadership leadership political leadership is failing us and I've given you and I don't have to give you the examples they are awash ministries you know the, the level of scandals and the reason we must hold first and foremost and this is my view often the political leadership say the problem is the technical leadership the technocrats because they lack the political leadership and that for me is where it must be and there is now a feeding in together so I totally agree with my colleague here that trust is important mm -hmm. trust is essential I agree totally we are in a place today sadly where we can no longer trust and really our president needs to realize that the challenge our president has the challenge the cabinet has is to restore trust trust in the leadership that's it that's the truth that's a challenge now it is even now much harder to develop laws the reason for all this tension as I told you the reason why there was tension so much tension and it's regrettable that we had soldiers we had parliament behaving the way it did it's all regrettable but the reason is the breakdown of that trust what happened on Thursday there was a sense in which this cabinet you know the executive wanted to steal through we, we got the sense the executive wants to steal this oil my dear friend that's yes that's the impression they are, they are busy they want to steal this oil we want to be able to license whoever and please remember we have seen we, we could and I don't have time to give you the story why we've lost so much already already yeah. we have lost so much already so so much that's in, a terms challenge. Of what in terms of uh, we can discuss details 15 percent and I leave that to you to be able to explain to this country but there is we have lost please I can tell you the amount of money we are spending in courts of law 19 billion I think in a case somewhere we ought not to be losing this kind of money if due diligence was being undertaken right. by public officials so the second thing I would like to say is that indeed let's do everything we can so government the responsibility to restore trust in our public leadership but secondly there is no doubt that we also must give a law that provides for checks and balances provides for accountability and transparency to give these powers to the minister does not provide for that but my take on this is that uh, me as a person who was involved in the drafting of the laws was the fact that we had good faith in drafting the law and we had good faith that I mean Parliament will give us good comments you know in the law and then come up with the law that will enable us to do what the bishop prescribes us uh, he wants us to do in terms of a fair and uh, uh, trusted manner I have no doubt that whether people are fighting in Parliament over a clause in the law for me that's good enough that the reason why we yeah, there is debate over the law and the reason why we subjected this law to Parliament was purposely for that purpose that people should find a common ground and I told you that I believe that even though they went round the other day tomorrow they will come back and give us a law so, yeah for me I think we want to end at the point of agreement with you I totally agree with you wait a minute Absolutely. for me at the end of the day I'm standing by and put and waiting yeah, as a technical person and waiting for parliament parliament I'm not looking at parliament in terms of who is who and which party is there I'm looking at parliament yeah the August house to give us a good law I, I now, totally agree that law comes through voting or through negotiations through whatever what happens that's not I totally agree with you my appeal is yes. that let's not hurry to vote uh, and let's now, negotiate let's build yeah, consensus I totally agree one of with you yeah one of the callers did say that uh, he was disappointed in my you know reaction to what the bishop is discussing and I have to tell him that uh, he needs not to be worried about me because what I did was to uh, draft the law 
and the law has been subjected to scrutiny through cabinet and through parliament and the process is still ongoing so what is he worried about you have to go thank you very much indeed that that's not exactly Something you want to tell me, honey? <laughs> Sweetie. Uh-huh. 